From the Lord of Flesh by Jovan Mihailovich. The artist was still in shock with that what he had seen in his mind. Whatever it was, he wasn't sure of it, and he would never be sure, though he suspected what he saw was his real future. But he didn't want to think of it. He wasn't brave enough, strong enough for that. Somehow he knew that if it was the way it was to be, then he couldn't do anything about it anyway. So then uh, they started Theater Academy. That was the uh, first time uh, they were having a playwriting division, which was never done before in the entire part of Europe, actually. There was uh, 179, actually, candidates. And out of them, they selected 16, out of which I was number one. But that means nothing, because I didn't have any support among family who were nobody was really in any position, party, communist party, so yeah, it's, it's all story. Yeah, I was just reading some of his poetry recently that he wrote, which I enjoyed quite a lot. It's, uh, some uh, poetry based on titles of uh, Jewish tunes, uh, well actually klezmer tunes, like Eastern, old, old uh, Eastern European Jewish music from like the early 19th, uh, early 20th century, late 19th century. He takes the titles and then he writes a poem based on the title, kind of abstract. I went to one of these uh, acting studios where they have theaters, and his play was there. It was a one-man act, and it was a fantastic play. It was a one-act play where this guy had, I guess, maybe it was something Jovan was thinking about. as a playwright and everything. He was always on the phone calling somebody, getting people together to appear in this production. Mm -hmm. And then... There's always somebody, his landlady, talking outside of a door. You never see her. Where's the rent? This and that. And finally, he gets people interested. And this goes on for a couple hours. Then they all, for some reason, they all call up later and they cancel out. For anybody who has something to say, it's very crucial to have audience. Otherwise, you're like a lunatic talking to, to, to nobody around. Uh, when I wrote my novel about Paganini and so that's interesting. It's a pact with devil. It's a very unique thing based on in Chicago, present day Chicago. Mm -hmm. uh, the punishment for for uh, Paganini who who wrote a pact with devil is that he's in hell. But his punishment is like that. He comes to the town, everywhere he goes, big signs, great Paganini is here to give concert. And then he goes to the main opera house, and there is a uh, here is a big noise of people in there. He goes around the building, go to the back door, go to the stage. As soon as he comes to the stage, the noise stops. Looks around, there is nobody in there, except few rats moving back and forth, empty. That's and then he realized that it's uh, the the whole thing was illusion. That he his his cries, screams of the agony, and then the whole thing repeats again. Red, crimson, and sparks of gold, all in the eyes of a pigeon, hopelessly in love with the sunset in Venice. Jovan Mihailovich. Expressing yourself is very important because it's like a, some kind of a cosmic law. You are born as an individual, you are born as a particular person, and certainly your messages have to be as personal, as specific as you are as a human being. Well, you see, nothing can stop you if you really want to, if you have something to say, there is no force that can shut up your mouth. There is, uh, that's, uh, that's it. The kind of focus that he's got, just so in intense, it's just amazing, you know? It's just amazing. So art is, is a food for, for heart, for thought, for mind, for, for the soul. And uh, eventually each human being is potential artist, I would say. So only some people just feel that they cannot do it and they never do it. And some people just ne have no opportunity to start doing it. But never stop. If you start, never, never, ever, never stop doing it. We give him the kind of Renaissance man label because you know who else can do so many things so well? You know, write poetry and and play, you know, play the way he plays and then paint as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, 
You have to have passion for that, you know? And I gave a lots of thought about it. Um, and I think that Renaissance man is basically a man, human being, who loves the universe, who loves this planet, who loves the people around him. And finally, he loves himself but or herself, but in that very particular order. And you know what, uh, the chance was given to me to do something and I'm trying to do something. Mm -hmm. It's nothing forever, I'm not forever, but I will do my best to leave something behind me. Mm -hmm. That's about it.